Hi guys! This Crawler King 4x4 180 in scale, 40 km an hour, 2.4 GHz and waterproof desert buggy was sent to me by rcmoment.com. So thank you very much. Now let's unbox this thing. Ta-da! Here it is. Looks very nice. First let's have a look inside this bag of goodies. So we have a USB charger for the battery. A 4-way hex wrench for the wheel nuts and a small Phillips screwdriver. Now let's have a look at the manual. We have information about the electronics, how to trim the steering and how to drive this thing. And then of course very nice exploded views. They can be very helpful if you are in trouble putting things back together. And finally a spare parts list. Very good. So far so good. So now let's take this thing out of the box. The 2.4 GHz transmitter is the usual small WL Toys model. It has throttle dual right and steering trim buttons. And it takes 4 AA batteries. Now let's cut the zip ties and take this car out of the box. So here it is. The suspension is a bit springy, especially the rear one. The differentials are working nice and free. On the rear we have a solid axle. The prop shaft joints are made of metal, very good. On the front side we have metal CVDs. The steering doesn't have too much backlash. I also like the aluminium skid plate. Unfortunately the spare tire is not usable. Now let's have a closer look at the battery. Let's see. It's a 2 cell 700 mAh 6.4 volt live V PO type. But hmm, I don't like this 4 pin non standard connector. But all in all, it looks very good so far. Now you may think, I know this guy. Well, this is no wonder, because it's WL Toys 12428's little brother. It's called 18429. And as you can see, they are very similar in almost every detail. Just the scale is different. Now I have added 4 AA inner loop rechargeables to the transmitter. So let's connect the lithium ion battery and switch this thing on. As always in WL Toys models, you have to switch on the car first, if you want to pair it with a new transmitter. Steering works. As well as the throttle. But it seems a little bit slow, so let's increase the dual rate. Now it's better. Okay. But how much dead zone around the center position does this steering have? 
Well, it's not horrible, but it could be a little bit better. So come on WL Toys, you know how to do it. This behavior could be fixed easily if you would use a better potentiometer. Okay, but does it drive? Yes. So now we want to test whether this car is compatible or not with this WL Toys A979B transmitter. Okay, as you can see it's now paired with this transmitter. The steering adjustment also works. As well as the throttle. And as already mentioned in earlier videos, the dead zone around the center position is much better with this transmitter. So, if you have lots of WL Toys cars like me, it's good to know that you can always use the same transmitter. And yes, you knew it. Because we are on the DIY Guy 999 channel here, we have to take this thing apart. Now we are in. Here we have the standard WL Toys ESC slash receiver for DC motors. The steering servo is a 5 pin type. The brushed ESC has 4 power MOSFETs and this is the 2.4 GHz antenna. The brushed motor has a big heatsink on it. So far so good, it looks like expected inside. The steering mechanism looks fine. As I already said, I don't like this proprietary 4 pin battery connector. Both cells are wired separately to the plug. On the other side of the plug they are wired in series. So we could just chop off the plug and use a standard JSD or T plug. This would allow to use a standard 7.4V 2S LiPo. Now let's remove the ESC and have a closer look inside the gearbox. We also have to unplug the 5 pin servo. It looks like the gap between the motor mount and the gearbox cover is a little bit too big. We will seal it later. So far so good. But now let's remove this gearbox cover. Now we are in. This gearbox design is virtually identical with the 12428. But of course it's smaller. It still has ball bearings. The central drive shaft is also made of metal. Very good. Next question. Do the wheels have ball bearings? Let's find out. At least we have a standard hexagon adapter. And yes, a ball bearing. Very nice. Oops, the locking pin just fell out. Ok, let's proceed with the front wheel. Bingo, this is also a ball bearing. So. I like the mechanics, especially for the price point. The gearbox cover is now back in place. We don't want fine gravel inside the gearbox. So now I will add some white glue in order to seal it. This glue is sealing the gap perfectly. But it still can be removed without the problem later on. 
That's it. The glue will be translucent after it is dry. So let's put the ESC back in place. If you know the video above, you know why I don't trust the sealing of this ESC. So let's add some conformal coating spray. We apply it to the top of the main switch, to the opening of the ESC. You can't see it on the video. But I have also applied a bit to the PCB on the motor. As already mentioned, I don't like this proprietary wiring of the battery. So let's try if a standard LiPo fits inside the car. As you can see, this LiPo from an A959 fits perfectly inside the battery compartment. It's an 1100 mAh 2S LiPo. And it has a JST connector. So let's reassemble this thing. The first thing to do is to secure the ESC battery wire with zip ties. The antenna is now also secured with a zip tie. The final step is to mount the body. Afterwards we will be ready for a first indoor test drive. Unfortunately I did not film this test drive. Why? Because it was dead afterwards. Maybe the receiver did not like the additional conformal coating. So I can't show you any running footage in stock condition. It's still a great little car. So I decided to do a brushless conversion. But this will be part of the next video. The result is insane. If you like this video, hit the subscribe button and turn on notifications. Bye!